Hi guys, so on video, the first video I told you that I was going to make a uh, video about uh, solving strategies and methods. So I am going to do that today. Um, these are actually just the methods that I use. I'm not saying that, you know, there's probably tons more out there. Uh, there this game, there is no set way on how to solve a puzzle. It's kind of how each individual looks at the puzzle and processes the problem in their own mind. There's actually some people that left comments on how they solved uh, these riddles on their own. There's actually people that write it down on a piece of paper and restart. And there's another person that, um, it's actually the girl I share a Facebook page with for it, uh, Einstein's riddle. Um, she actually does it a row at a time. So let me just show you um, what I'm talking about. So here's just, I'm going to choose a an easier level so that I can zoom in on the screen. Hopefully you guys can see a decent view of that. So when I first started this puzzle, I actually started by selecting a row of random stuff. So, and if you're wondering how I'm getting this flag to just appear in one slot, um, you can look at the first video uh, on hints and tips where I actually explain all the shortcuts and the, um, the tips on how to, you know, solve what all the buttons do and stuff like that and the colors of these little dots, what they all mean. So you can look at that video and find out um, some shortcuts on how to solve the puzzle faster. So when I first started this puzzle, I would select a row, just any random row, and I would build my clues based on that. Um, so... This flag doesn't have the banana, so I'd take the banana out, and then I would just go to the, and the banana doesn't have a crown, can't do anything with that. So I would base it on uh, these rows right here, which um, sometimes I find that, yeah, it does work awesome. The puzzle is solved, like, in no problem at all. But uh, after playing for a while, I noticed that, oh, this isn't working as great as I had hoped. So I started by another method, which actually does work good, um, I want to say more on insane levels and more on expert levels, just because you have so many different rows and items to deal with. Um, like I said, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It just So uh, the, the second method that I use, and I actually do quite use it quite frequently, um, if this method, method doesn't work, I use the row method. So I would start by putting the the first clue, which is the fox have the clips. And I'd go to the next one, and then I would just fill in, okay, the cat has, what is it, oh, the helicopter. So I would start building the clues based on these two things, and as you go, You'll take some things out, say that the cat doesn't have um, the moon. So you know that, oh, I could start this third column with the moon and then build the clues on that. So it's not just one set row, you're building clues based on these two separate rows here. So let's say, for instance, um, the first clue, you can go by whatever clue you want. The first clue, let's say the fox doesn't have a guitar. So I will start the clue by... Now, this is not what the puzzle actually is, but just saying. So, the, the fox doesn't have a guitar. So, I'll start a row based on the, the animals, and I would start a row based on the instruments. So, now I'm not just building on one row. I can base it on two different rows. Let's say that, oh, the fox doesn't have a harp, so you take the harp out. And then, it will say, oh, eventually, in a different clue, it will say, oh, the harp has the coffee. So... I'll just put the harp here and the coffee here, and now I have three different rows I'm building the clues on. So, and a lot of times, whatever is not in these first three rows, um, it will be like a, let's say, we know that a nickel doesn't go in all three of these rows, so I'll put a nickel here and the thing, the eclipse here, say that those two go together, so that I'm building on not just these little isolated corners, but I like for them to, my clues to have you know, more variety where it's kind of got a little something in each little category. So that's another way of playing it. Um, 
and like I said, it seems to be working really well on extreme and insane levels just because you are working with a lot of different items. But I noticed on that method, sometimes you get to the last two rows where you haven't really put anything in there and you kind of are, you know, stuck because you don't know which item goes where. So sometimes it'll work out nicely where um, all the things, the process of elimination, oh, the last row that you don't have anything or didn't do anything with, um, the last level I played, I had two different sections here that all had items, but yeah, a process of elimination, the last thing that was in this box was a bunny. Unfortunately, it had, you know, one complete row of something, which is kind of what you want. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but that's another method of doing it. But another way you can do it is um, if you're working on an individual row and you realized I'm stuck, I need to start guessing. Before you start guessing, if you actually just go ahead and take a screenshot of this before you start guessing, um, then you can always start guessing and realize it doesn't work. And then you can go back to that screenshot and keep referencing. It's just a, it's a good little tidbit to take screenshots. Every time I restart, I take a screenshot. And sometimes I realize, oh, I made a mistake in one of the other screenshots because the newer ones said that these don't go together. So I found a game I was playing. I actually had to look and play for a while to find a shot or a predicament I was in where I actually had to use this method. Um, this is Insane Level 24. Uh, so I've been playing for a while and I'm trying to get everything here. So the this is where the process of elimination kind of comes in key or is handy. So I've been playing for a while and I'm kind of stuck on which where are these drinks because I have the the beer and the limeade or whatever that is. Um, stuck in two different spots, and I'm not sure the clues don't tell me, you know If this row has it or this row has it and the way I actually started this puzzle Is I did the method where I started at one one line at a time where I found two clues that didn't go together and started it this one actually the I think the One of these actually went together. I think it was the car in this little PS PlayStation they went together, so I started the row with that, and then I did the computer and the thing, and then I started picking items um, that I knew didn't go in these two rows that started somewhere in the middle, so that I would have a little bit more scattered variety um, of hints and clues I can build on. So the one I'm concentrating on right now is the beer and the lime, lime juice. Um, I'm trying to figure out which one it needs to go in. So I know that the M has the lime juice. Oh, okay, so it's not lime, lime juice, whatever. So I know the M has that, and I actually, it's going to skip through a lot of clues, or skip over a lot of clues really fast, because I did the method where you shelve the items. Um, if you're not sure what that means, I do have a video where it explains every single button what it does, um, so you can refer to that. So again, the M goes to the lime juice, so, and then, well, and Google too, but, oh, actually, I missed a clue. This one doesn't have Google. So, M has the lime juice, and I noticed that uh, S has the beer. So, I can actually, I know that this box only has the beer and the limeade, and the beer and the limeade. So, I actually, I can't, blah, can't talk. I can go into these boxes and actually just keep the M and the S because I know that that belongs to the beer and the lime juice so I can just go ahead and take all these out so and you might if you're ordinary just looking through the clues you might just skip over that uh, that aspect because you know again you're only looking for okay the M goes to lime juice well I don't know which one it is so I'll just skip over that one so you might just continually skip over it and not really see it so as you're playing the game, you kind of have to um, make sure that you do the process of elimination thing just to give you a little bit more clues. So I'll take it out of this box too. And that doesn't necessarily mean it will solve the puzzle, but it gives you more, you know, you know that some, some things are less in these boxes that you need to worry about. So maybe, you know, the F had the stake and that you know that the F isn't in here anymore then you could take the stake out and so that would give you you know a little bit more process of elimination on where things should go it might start taking stuff out of these rows that will entail 
or that would then give you answers to which um, of these they don't have in this row and then it will just process of elimination will give this row you know whichever one it didn't have and then it'll keep solving it I hope that makes sense so sometimes you might have to think outside the box and do process of elimination that comes in handy kind of you know if you've been running through the clues for a long time and you shelved the items you kind of get to go through the clues faster and so it's not like you have to sit there and memorize through a hundred um, clues that oh you know M belongs to <coughs> excuse me lime juice and S belongs to beer the only reason why I noticed that is because I skipped through a bunch of clues so that's when this little guy comes in handy anyways I hope that makes sense okay and then I guess this isn't really another method it's kind of the uh, a little add-on to the method with the selecting the rows so I have a partner that does the Facebook page with me on Real Einstein's Riddles and she's amazing at this puzzle. She she does like Einstein Riddle insane levels in like 20 minutes or less or 30 minutes or less. It's ridiculous. And so I asked her, what is your secret? And so she told me she just starts with the bottom row and she just, you know, does the row method where she chooses something and then she'll start going through the clues and, you know, eliminating stuff. And I guess she goes by, you know, if there's not very many clues to go off of, then she just restarts and go by the next level and does this until she finds a row that actually gives her a lot of clues to where she could solve it. So that's so far what she told me. So I swear she must have answers or something because she can punch out answers like nobody's business. But that's another way you can do it is you could just do a row, take a screenshot, Restart, do a row, take a screenshot, you know, and then compare all the pictures together and, you know, I'm sure it will solve itself. I have done that method before where I just refer. I do refer a lot to the screenshot method, which is very convenient. Um, so those are kind of the hints and tips that I have. Uh, if I find any more or somebody messages me and tells me different hints, uh, I will keep you guys posted, but as of today, right now, those are the two main methods that I use that actually work fairly well for me. Um, I start by doing the, you know, different rows with the different clues, and once I figure out, oh, that doesn't work, then I do the, the row method. But just remember, screenshots are amazing. They're a quick reference point. Um, the this little cheat sheet right here like I said you could look at the other video I posted the cheat sheet this does work but it does have some drawbacks um, and the method where you know you look at a clue and realize that oh these two items only have these two things um, like the the lime juice and the beer and the S and the M I was talking about a little bit earlier you know it's all about process of elimination and yes you do have to guess sometimes and it's just you know it's what makes this game so stinking addicting, dang it. But it does help your memory, and I'm sure it, you know, exercises your brain. And if you're like me, I need all the exercise and brain training I can get. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this and it was helpful. Please subscribe to my channel. And I will keep posting stuff, uh, answers to levels. Anybody has questions on whether they want a video made of, you know, a particular level you're solving, just message me. I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Have a great day and keep on playing.